So thank you, thank you for uh, joining me on this uh, um, workshop. Uh, my name is uh, Antonio Linari, and uh, I am uh, the head of innovation in uh, Expert.ai. Uh, our company uh, provides tools for um, simplifying natural language processing and natural language uh, understanding. Um, something about me. Uh, so. I've been in natural language processing and natural language understanding practitioner now for basically 15 years, maybe a little bit more. And, uh, and I've been a software developer since I was 11. So I really started early, early. When, well, I was developing Basic and Fortran and Pascal, so very old, uh, very old uh, uh, programming language. And I, I am the author of two projects on uh, GitHub, so GoFreeLink and uh, Goose. GoFreeLink is the port of uh, an NLP library written by the University of Catalonia from C++ to Go. And Goose is a library for uh, converting HTML pages into um, plain text again in, in Go. And as you can understand, Go is kind of my um, default programming language. Okay, together with uh, Svelte, you can see here. So we have Svelte for uh, developing uh, front end. We have Go for um, developing the back end. And of course, we have our API. That's the topic of our, uh, that's yeah, the, the topic, the main topic of today. And we have a uh, in this case for today, the graph that is a graph database where we are going to um, store our knowledge graph. So uh, what is semantic anatomy for an email? So so why, why we need this, okay? So basically because uh, uh, usually when we see an email, uh, we just associate that to um, some metadata, so the headers, the who send the email, who received the email, if there are people that are there in CC and, and stuff like that, okay? Uh, instead, we can automatically leverage more meaning, okay, inside the, the email um, be, beyond the, the usual metadata. So who, who can uh, kind of take advantage of this? Well, Basically everyone, okay, because uh, uh, everybody uses email, okay, and uh, and uh, we uh, we especially if we receive a lot of emails, uh, sometimes we lose track of what we are, what we got, what we wrote, who wrote us, and so forth. And uh, what you can do with uh, you know a better email management, well. Uh, internally, so inside your company, you can, you know, better improve the, the search by adopting some semantic techniques. So using the, the meaning of the words to leverage your search, uh, you can find uh, talents, okay? Imagine you, uh, you have someone who receives a lot of requests about a specific topic, and it, it, it becomes kind of a point of reference for the company. And so maybe it's worth it to know that he is, exists and you know, you, so that you can take action. Same for facilitate connections, okay? You can basically um, find out that two people shares a lot of things, but they never communicate to each other, okay? And so through, through, these, uh, through the emails and management, through, through a smart email management, you can facilitate that. And again, address conflicts. For example, if you find out that there are topics that are kind of challenging, okay, you can intervene and try to fix um, if necessary. On the outside, uh, well, it, we we all receive a lot of newsletter or emails coming from uh, you know potential clients or potential providers now contacting us through LinkedIn. Okay, sometimes we just want to put this all this communication together to try to understand who is talking to us, what they, they do and, and so forth, okay? So how we can, um, you know, uh, leverage all this, uh, of course, using um, lingu lang the language, okay? So using uh, semantic analysis, so providing context, okay? And using knowledge graphs. 
And of course, because we are talking about a very sensitive topic, email, okay, all respecting uh, the privacy, or at least with the, um, with the people allowing us to do this. So let's see how an email is formed. Okay, so this is the request for, for comment uh, 5322 that describes basically the structure of, the, of an email. Okay, you can recognize uh, some familiar fields like uh, uh, the, the subject, you can see the, the, the destination, the author of the email, the date, and then you can, you can see the, the body. Okay, in this case, specifically because of uh, the main topic of these API days, uh, we chose uh, um, something related to insurance, okay? In this case, the, all our uh, workshop will be based on uh, dental coverage insurance proposed by um, um, someone belonging to a, a specific uh, um, insurance company. And as you can see on the right, oh, sorry, on the right, we can basically represent this email without taking into account the body as a simple graph where we have in blue here the email and then we have the originator we have the, uh, the destination okay and we have also some extra information related to uh, the names the real names behind the email addresses so how uh, semantics can help in uh, enriching this uh, uh, graph and allow us to put together, for example, threads of conversation, okay, to, uh, to um, find some insight. Uh, of course, you know, in the example we will see, we will just analyze three very simple emails, uh, but in, in, in reality, usually we have uh, threads that sometimes are very long, they, they involve many people, uh, not all the people are involved in the full conversation so um, sometimes we lost we, we lose track sorry of, of what uh, what was in in the thread and this, and of course if we have many threads okay we uh, we we can easily uh, lose track of what the conversation was about and uh, and, and the tool like this can can uh, help you know finding also correlation between different threads so Let's just first see how we can enrich this, uh, um, this graph by using a semantic technology. Okay, so I'm going here on our uh, demo portal. So you can go to developer.expert.ai. Uh, I don't know if someone has followed the, um, the presentation by Laura uh, 30, 40 minutes ago. So for some of you, maybe I will repeat something, but I, I will try to be very fast and, and clear. So this is our developer uh, portal. You can uh, register and you can have access. As you can see, every month you have 10 million characters um, uh, platform, platform. And uh, you can basically have access also to our demo online. And our demo online is actually what we are going to use today to show the uh, the power of our um, API. So here, this is the the demo portal. Okay, I copied uh, the the text that I showed you in the presentation. The, just the name are different because I'm using fake name, but more not John Doe or Jane Doe. I'm using fake name, but kind of real names. Um, and you can see here. So John, sorry, Anthony is writing to John and proposing him uh, some extra coverage, specifically dental coverage insurance, okay? And uh, let's see what uh, our um, technology can do. So we, we push uh, analysis. And uh, what we have here now is uh, a full um, semantic analysis of every single token in, uh, in our text. Specifically, we can see that for every uh, word or compound, so composition of words. Okay, we we can see uh, the, um, the, the the 
base form. So you see here looking over becomes look over in the base form. And we can have um, some specific uh, meanings. We can see, for example, here, let me see. We can do multi-line, okay. So coverage, you see that is something related to communication and writing. So the 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 disambiguator, so our our uh, technology can extract the real meaning of the words inside the text. And once you have the real meaning, okay, it's easier for you to, uh, for example, search for specific terms that uh, by keyword would uh, you know um, create a lot of noise. But in this case, would just uh, go exactly where you you want to go uh so let's see what we really need for our example so uh, beside the this the disambiguation okay that extract the, the the concept that we have in our in our email in this case we have some key elements uh if we can see here for example that the system you know propose coverage insurance dental coverage insurance it says great option. So all these health in incorporation. So these are all um, phrases that we can use uh, to enrich our uh, graph in the email, representing the email. And uh, another thing that we can use is the main concepts. Okay, so we have different concepts that the system were able to detect and uh, um, highlight in a, in a way. So you see here, for example, we have option, we have incorporated, we have coverage, and here we have a sort of short uh, meaning, okay? So we know that when we talk about incorporated, we're basically talking about a company in, in, organization, in an organization, okay? Uh, the other things that we can do is to try to extract the names of the entities inside the our text and you see that we can find John, we find Anthony Lamar, we found that th there is a, an a, a executive vice president, okay, and we have a phone number. Uh, again, the last things that we are going to use for our demo today is the sentiment. So um, the system analyzes also the, the terminology that we use inside our email and trying to detect if the, uh, the, the the sentiment of the of the email in this case is positive or negative, so how can we use all this data for enriching our email? So let's see. Let's go back to our presentation, okay. And uh, here we have our previous email with uh, some extra data that we were able to um, tag or to label inside our uh, email. And as you can see, now we have John that it's probably the same John Fang that is the destination of the email. Okay. We have dental coverage as a important relevant terms. We have great options, both as a relevant uh, terms, but also a measure of the positivity, so the of the sentiment. So in this case, we have great options, love uh, that um, you know make us think that this is a, this is a positive uh, email. And you see how the the graph now for a single email uh, becomes uh, more rich. Okay, so now we have these uh, tags. We have that Anthony Lamar is not only the sender, but it's also mentioned inside the, 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 the content is here, Anthony Lamar. And uh, same for John Fang. And of course, in this case, uh, there is John, but uh, because in a thread, the context, is, the, the context is very limited, okay? It's very uh, probable, okay, likely, that you that the the same name mentioned in different uh, bodies uh, is related to the same person. Uh, so after this email, let's imagine that um, John answered to Anthony Lamar, and this is the possible answer. Where again, now is that John that is answering to Anthony, and we've. Uh, Malcolm always in CC. And this time he says, Anthony, thanks for reaching out. 
okay, I'm interested in your dental coverage and insurance. And a friend of mine, Susan Dell, would like to talk to you about the same topic. So this is interesting because we have this is Susan Dell that is not in the loop. She, she is not aware that someone is mentioning her because she's not, not in, uh, in uh, CC or uh, as a destination of the email. Okay. And, uh, and you see now the representation on the right, we have Susan Dell here as a possible person mentioned inside the email, but we don't really know anything else. Okay, maybe in the future we will get another email where uh, she will be um, involved directly. Uh, okay, and so we can get also her email address. Okay, but for now, this is, uh, this is it. Um, Next, we have Malcolm that write to Mary, supposed to be the CEO of this uh, company. Sorry, there is a, an error here. Um, okay, and uh, it says, Mary, good news. Okay, we have two new clients and uh, we, we are talking John Fang, that is uh, the, the, the first client, okay, introduced his friend Susan Dell to John. Okay, and again, here we see that this uh, graph becomes a little bit um, more um, expressed. Uh, so let's see how we can, we can do all this by coding the, something here, okay? We, we will go through the, the code we want. Um, so we will not... Um, code live, okay? We will go through the code. So in a real scenario, we will have uh, a uh, class IMAP. This is a, an internet messaging uh, application protocol, if I remember uh, well. And this is the, um, the protocol that is used to uh, collect emails, okay? From our uh, email server. And as you can see, we have to provide uh, a username and, pass and password and the, the number of messages that we want to collect. In our case, we are using Gmail, okay? And uh, we, we, we just see the, the, main, the main things that we can do. We can log in inside the, the, the Gmail account. We can relate to the mailbox info, uh, where usually we have all the uh, incoming uh, messages, okay? And we start collecting the messages, okay? Here, we uh, we check how many messages uh, we want to collect, okay? And uh, here is where we create this uh, um, channel where the messages are sent once they they are fetched from uh, our web our email server. And here is the fetch operations that actually uh, collect the messages, okay? And uh, here for message range messages. Okay, we start analyzing the messages and trying to collect the extra data that we have in our, in our email. So all the headers from, so the sender, the destination of the email, the CC and the subject and the body. Okay, you can recognize here, we, well, we need the ID just to be sure to collect also the message ID for future uh, search. We can collect the date so that we know exactly when the email was um, sent. And, uh, and here we have uh, the, the sender again, destination. You see that the, both the sender and the destination can be uh, multiple people. And, and here we get, we collect the, the subject. And, uh, and then we start extracting the body. The body can be, uh, multi-part body so where you have to basically uh, download uh, um, chunks of of text and if there are uh, attachment you can get the attachment here okay so here we collect these descriptors okay we have a structure here models where we um, describe the data model for a descriptor. And as you can see, basically a descriptor um, contains the uh, relevant information uh, of the email, okay? 
And uh, in, the only new thing that we have, okay, is these entities where we have a, a list of entity where every entity is characterized by a label, a value, and a score. Okay, we are not going in inside any other details because uh, an entity can can have multiple entities pointing to it. Okay, but we 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 don't care for this uh, uh, workshop. Uh, okay, so this is the the model. The next thing is to collect the bodies of the email and send it to our API. Okay, so this is the interesting part. You can you can find uh, uh, the Python and Java SDK already available on the web, on the developer portal. Okay, this is a, a, an example of how you can create uh, the same um, SDK, in this case using Golang, but uh, the same applies for JavaScript or if you want just to use a, a REST client. Okay, you see we have some uh, endpoints, the, the endpoints where we need to uh, um, send our credentials to, to uh, get the, the token that we need to use to then call the real service and analyze our text. Okay, and this is the endpoint for the full analysis that we want to provide. In this case, we, uh, for the English language. Uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, very simple: the uh, creation of the structure. So the, the structure API by providing a username and password. The next uh, function is a, a login that allows to um, check for the credentials and send a post authorization request to get the authorization token that is here. Okay. Once we have the authorization token, we can analyze the text here. So we can send the text. You see that the text is actually embedded inside a, a, a different structure containing this document field and the text field where the actual text is uh, collected. And then we send the request to our endpoint, uh, providing also the uh, token that we uh, received when we uh, logged in. Um, once we get the answer, here is the body, okay? We receive a JSON uh, and this JSON must be um, serialized into uh, an object an object so what we can do is so sorry we have sorry we just this is this serialize sorry and uh, um, what we need to do here so is to use in our model i will show you the model is here we have a structure named expert ai okay where you can find all the possible um, field provided by the JSON. Okay, and you see there are many of them. And what we are interested today in is basically this one. Okay, we go here, we have main phrases. This is the one we are we're going to use. And the main synchrons. This is another one we are going to use. And topics, where topics are basically the domain uh, the, um, the the content of the email belongs to, like um, insurance uh, or economy or politics and stuff like that. It's not really a classification. It's more um, uh, finding the general domain, the general, yeah, general topic. It's not a really category. And, and this is out of the box. So, so this uh, domain comes out of the box. You don't have to create any um, rule or you don't have to train any models to, to have this topic back. And then we have the entities that we will use for uh, collecting people names, um, organization names and company names and other uh, entities like uh, phone numbers, email addresses and so forth. And the last thing, the last two things that we're going to use is the knowledge where we can map the concept that we um, um, we got from the disambiguation. We can map them into um, the, the the label that I showed you before, and uh, and the sentiment, of course, 
gives us uh, uh, if the content is positive or negative with a specific score that we will use for um, possible uh, query. Okay, so this is what we are going to use. Um, next is to take the, the answer and create our graph. So for the workshop of today, we are using the graph. It's here. I don't know if you are familiar with, uh, with the graph. Here it is. So the graph is uh, a graph database uh, written in Go that is uh, compatible with uh, both uh, GraphQL. It's a sort of a dialect of GraphQL and uh, and also kind of an RDF or you know um, semantic web uh, database. So you can use a, a similar syntax for, for that. And, uh, and in fact, I can show you the schema that we are using. And this is a sort of a triple um, schema. You can recognize a sort of a RDF schema here. So where we have some fields that we are going to use for uh, identifying specific properties of our of our uh, graph okay and uh, we are not going to communicate with our real uh, gmail server so for this uh, workshop we have what i call an offline class that what it does it load the it loads these uh, these json containing the three emails that we saw at the beginning okay here it is and uh, create the the graph from from these emails and the graph is the one that we saw we we, we saw the the breakdown of the graph with the three emails you know but now we will see the full graph in uh, in uh, in our graph database so how this works we basically go through all the entities that we have in our descriptor. So the from contains the uh, all the headers related to the sender. And you see that what we do here is, first of all, we check if we already uh, save this so that if the email address is the same in a different email, we can overlap the nodes. So we can, we can make uh, the, the, the node just unique. Okay, because the email is supposed to be uh, unique and uh, universal, so sort of a UID per se, and uh, and then we um, we create some properties here, uh, linking the uh, ID of this new node, this new entity, with specific uh, properties: label, value, and score or predicates. Okay, in DGraph calls these predicates. Okay. And, and then we have the values that we want to um, to save in, this, in our graph database. And then we create the relations between the, uh, in this case, the sender and the message. And then we what we do is uh, we create a mutation. So we uh, basically order the, the database to uh, create a new records inside the, is uh, storage, it's storage. And the same apply for two and CC, so we can have a full picture of all the actors in the on the stage. And the, and the last is the the entities. So what we do is we take all the instruction that we had before. So we have a name of people, name of companies, we have the topic, we have the locations, we have. Uh, the sentiment, okay, and we have the, the relevant sentences, uh, relevant, sorry, uh, relevant phrases. So all these elements that we can use to reach the uh, the, um, the graph, okay, we will uh, use it in uh, in this way. So same way of the others, okay, exactly the same way, but they represent different things, and we will see it later on the on the UI. Okay, then what we do is we create a transaction and we actually save the full. Um, the full uh, uh, triples, triples, sorry, in, inside the, the, the database. Okay, let's see now what we can do with this. Okay, so once you run the database 
and you uh, run the application. I already did it, I mean, uh, just for, for a matter of time. So what you can do is just start uh, investigating on what is in the, in the, in the, in the, in the database. And you, see, you can see from here, okay, what I'm saying here, I'm saying uh, extract all the uh, objects, in this case, I call them email, okay, where there is a body. And, uh, and uh, once you extract these, um, these emails, show me the ID, the subject, the timestamp, and the body. And if I run this, you see that I have three dots here. And if I open these three dots, I can see the actual emails that I saved inside the graph database. Okay, but of course, this is completely unuseful. Let's see now who is writing. We can start from the sender. And we don't want just to know the email address, but we want also to know the, the people behind the, uh, the email address. Okay, so if we run this query, you see now that every email has also uh, not only the email address, but also the, um, the person behind the, the, the single email address, okay? Now we want also to uh, see the destination of, so who is uh, receiving these emails, okay? Here, you can see that the, now the graph is starting connecting emails between each other because as we know, uh, Anthony write to John and John reply back to Anthony, okay? So we can see here that we have this Anthony that is from, so he's writing this email to who? To uh, John and John replied here, it's from, to Anthony and in both cases, uh, we know that Lamar uh, is, uh, is in info, but it's not possible to see it now for, because we didn't uh, show the CC. So if we run again this, this query, now you see that the, the query reveals all the emails. But if you see, we didn't do anything really really you know not, there's no rocket science here okay because uh, uh, we basically what we what we did here is to use the metadata that we already have available on the email to just put together uh, this uh, this graph okay because the relations are uh, composed by uh, the email addresses the people behind the email addresses okay so let's let's add some uh, more content now so more context and see what we can um, what we can see and so how we can use this graph for a better use. And you can imagine, this is a very simple example and you can see how the graph is becoming quite complex, but okay. And of course, when, when you have very, um, very few emails, you basically have, uh, okay, good knowledge of what is happening in the email. But if, if the thread is pretty long, and uh, if you have to be deal with multiple threads, okay, yeah, probably you, you, you forget things or you just, just don't remember things, okay? And, uh, and uh, as, uh, tools like this helps you to investigate better or to make decision better. Uh, for example, are there any people mentioned that are not in the loop? So they're mentioned, but they are not aware that someone is talking about them, okay? And so what we can do here is we can reveal this um, this query uh, and I will show, I will explain. So what we are doing here is to say, okay, give me all the tags, okay, but filter. I want to see only the people names and ph, okay, and uh, and I want only the people that are connected to at least two uh, emails, okay, and in this case uh, are connected or. Uh, this means that they send an email or they are just um, in the content. So they are mentioned in the content. So if we run this now, okay, you see here we have this uh, orange color MPH and we actually find out that Susan Dell is mentioned in two emails, this one and this one, okay. But as you can see, she is not 
uh, in the loop. She doesn't know that someone is mentioning her. Uh, next things we can do is to try to understand what, uh, what are the uh, main arguments, main topic, these three ma emails talks about. So what I can do is I can just run this query where what I'm, I'm doing is I, I'm filtering again the tags according against sorry the the topic the label topic. and if i run this you see the topic is now the orange one and if i open here we are talking about insurance industry at least for two of the three emails and so this is good to aggregate very easily okay uh, not only emails belonging to the same thread but also emails belonging to different threads sharing the same content uh, and other things we can be interested in is uh, the sentiment so let's say uh, imagine a scenario where we want to understand if a conversation between a customer and uh, 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 the sales guy okay is going uh, good or not Okay, and we want to make a you know make decisions or take actions accordingly. Uh, and actually, we have also the timestamp, so we also we can also monitor or not monitor, not really, but we can detect if there is a, you know an increase in volume or a decrease in volume of email. So there's a, a lot of exchange. So there's this could be you know a lot of interest in what we are writing or the other way around. So. What we can do now is we can run this other query where we can say, okay, now filter the uh, tag with the label sentiment and see what kind of sentiment each email share with the others. And if we run this, you see sentiment is now this color purple and it's here. And as you can see, the purple, the sentiment is connected to all the three original messages and it's positive. Uh, last but not least, we can, uh, we can check if these uh, emails share uh, common concepts. So another scenario can be uh, talent uh, hunting okay, or discovery. And so what we can do is to say, okay, let's uh, grab these, e these emails and let's try to see if there are uh, people in the company that are influencer, that are always, you know, the, the people always call them for specific uh, topics, okay? And, uh, and so what we can do is to discover first if there are emails and which topic are uh, specific of uh, sorry, which which concept are shared between the email? Okay, so in this case, what we are doing is to say, okay, filter the tags according to a regular expression where the label start with uh, an hashtag. Okay, because the hashtag is uh, uh, the synonym for uh, concept. And so if if I run this and you see, I have the the color uh, pink here. Okay, and if I open here, you see that I have uh, this concept that is shared between three emails and is the coverage that is a situation. Okay, so in this way, if I, if I say, okay, who, who can talk about coverage? And I can see from here, I can extract the, the people that are talking about this. So I can detect this email okay and then from this email i can know that john fang okay it's involved in this coverage uh, topic of course this is this is a very simple example so um probably doesn't make any sense but you have to imagine how to apply the same concept to a bigger uh, totally bigger uh, volume of uh, email and of course you can use these tools for yourself okay just for analyzing your emails and uh, there are challenges because these are very simple examples, but in reality, you have, for example, you have uh, four words, okay? And you have so to split your message into sub messages. Uh, you have to detect inside the forward messages who are the, the, who is the sender, 
who were the, the, the destination and, and, and so forth. So to, um, to conclude, what are the, the takeaways for uh, after this, uh, this workshop? So, of course, the body of the emails matters because we saw that there are many uh, information that we can, um, we can extract and those information are not necessarily in the text, okay? They can be latent, like the sentiment, like the topic, okay? So we can, we can uh, uh, get and collect uh, many, many different aspects of, of the same content. Uh, we saw that we can actually represent a, a, an email as a, as a graph, and so we can mix together metadata provided by the header of the email with the uh, context provided by the body. And of course, I didn't take into account uh, the subject, but also the subject can be, uh, can be used. And sometimes uh, the subject is, is enough uh, to, um, to detect which is the main topic or if there are relevant uh, entities mentioned and so forth, okay? Uh, Again, we saw that a single thread or a discussion can really generate very complex graph, okay? And so you have to deal with that. And that's the reason why with a tools like uh, dgraph, but there are other uh, possibilities. Um, I can mention ArangoDB, I can mention Neo4j. If you use uh, uh, Java, you can, uh, you can use uh, Tiger Graph. Okay, there are plenty of these, okay? Uh, but the idea is that all these tools allows you to manage better the complexity and the vastity of these graphs, especially if you have many, many connections, okay? And uh, again, once you have the graph, you know, really the sky is the limit, okay? Another example that I can do is uh, uh, we can, uh, with, with our technology, we can extract relations, okay? For example, who did what? So in your email, when you represent a graph, you can also add a, a connection between entities mentioned in the same uh, email. And because you have at the timestamp, if the uh, action happens multiple times in multiple emails, you can take track of what happened and when it happened and between who happened or between who and, who and what. Uh, okay. so. Uh, it, it, it can become really a very powerful uh, tool. Uh, again, uh, it's very important uh, to, uh, to underline that, of, of course, there, there are privacy concerns, okay? So people must be aware and they, are, they have to authorize, okay, the use of the tools like this. But uh, on, on the other side, these tools can be used uh, uh, just for, for ourselves to have a better way to search, to better communicate with the outside or internally in the company. Uh, I think this is it for me. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. If you have uh, some questions, let me see.